Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it's time for another Q&A session. It's time for me to answer some of the questions that you guys left in the comment section of my videos. So with that said, let's just get to work and give you guys some answers. Lori G has a question regarding my homemade uh, pesticide insecticide against spider mites, which by the way, if you missed that video, you don't know what I'm talking about, check the description down below. She's saying that I once said that it takes one application typically to kill off all the mites, but you can actually add two if you make a dilute solution. However, on the insecticidal soap, on the label, it says to spray three, four times about a week apart because the spray doesn't kill the eggs. And if I can comment on this, yes, uh, the insecticidal soap, as the name suggests, it is actually a soapy solution. I don't think it has oil. My mixture has oil and this oil stays on the leaves and on the foliage and all the structures like a layer and it stays there for maybe a month total i mean my orchids i can still feel it but you can see they're not as shiny as in the day that i sprayed them except for the new leaf but this is normal it's just natural glossiness typically it only takes one application but if you mix up a weaker solution which i do suggest you start with because you don't know what type of orchid you're working with she might have sensitive leaves you can actually respray after a week or so simply because sometimes we might miss areas might miss crevices the respray i proposed doesn't refresh the layer of oil no it just makes sure that you actually covered all of the areas but i will remind you that if you make the full concentration the two percent you don't need to respray it's probably going to be damaging if you respray. So spray once and let it be for six months or a year before you actually respray. Um, the insecticidal soaps or anything that doesn't have oil, you can actually respray three, four times if the label tells you so because it doesn't create an after layer of anything. It just works while it's wet and afterwards it doesn't work anymore. Next question is on my video where I remove stains from leaves with lemon juice. Abdallah is asking in the future if it's going to harm the leaf. No, it's absolutely not going to harm the leaf. I've never had actually any harmed leaf because of the lemon juice. If there is any harm, it's harm done by water which didn't evaporate in time and maybe created some fungal spots, but the lemon juice itself shouldn't really pose any threats to orchids. But of course, to play it safe, you can always try on one leaf and let it be a few days, see how the orchid reacts before you start treating the entire orchid. My viewer Marites is asking a pretty good question. They're wondering if the air produced from a ceiling fan can affect the flower or the buds. So the answer is no, if the fan is not very, very strong and constantly moves the spike around and making it brush against the leaves or any other orchid. So if it doesn't move it physically, it's absolutely fine. The breeze actually helps with the development of orchids generally. Now, just to clarify a little bit, because I know why you asked this question, cold or hot draft is what makes buds and flowers and overall the orchid do poorly cold drafts and hot drafts change the temperature around the orchid and each orchid has its own temperature range that it likes that it handles and where it can develop normally if this temperature range is disturbed by an ac or a radiator which produces these very hot or very cold drafts, then yes, the orchid can actually react bad and dropping buds and dropping flowers is one of the first indications that the orchid is not okay with the temperature around it. Therefore, theoretically, a fan, which does not deliver too cold or too hot drafts, but maintains the temperature in the growing space should not do anything bad to the buds or the flowers. Mind you though, you need to keep your orchid very well hydrated because every draft or or current or breeze will also help with water evaporation. So the orchid might actually evaporate faster than normal and you might not notice it, you might not water it in time, it will suffer a little bit from dehydration and it can drop buds. So there you go, a very indirect result because of the fan. It could happen, it's not gonna probably happen, but it is worth mentioning just so you monitor the water levels. Rainier is asking yet another very interesting question. They say they found some orchids behind their house on a degrading piece of wood and they're asking if they should pot them or try to assist them. Alrighty, well the thing is, I don't know what the rules and regulations are in each country. I do know that in some countries it is actually illegal to just take orchids from the wild, no matter what. So should you take the orchids in? 
Maybe yes, maybe no, but as I told you, I think first you need to check with your legislation, with the authorities, see if it's actually illegal to take orchids from the wild. Second, you need to make sure that the orchid is indeed in trouble, because even if the wood is rotting, maybe the orchid is a terrestrial, so it will be perfectly fine in soil as well, but if it's not, maybe you should assist it. It's just such a personal thing that I don't think I can tell you what to do. You need to check with your legislations and afterwards you need to identify that orchid properly and see if indeed it is in trouble. Many of the times orchids are perfectly fine left in nature, but sometimes there are cases in which they really are in trouble. Case in which you don't necessarily need to bring it home, you can actually relocate it in nature in a more suitable place. If that orchid is an epiphytic uh, one and it would die on the soil, maybe you can take it and attach it in a little crevice of a tree or something I don't know I really don't think you should take my advice really on this just check with your authorities play it safe and my personal opinion is that you shouldn't really take orchids from the wild but yeah I cannot tell you what to do here and for any of you I do strongly recommend that you check with the authorities see the status of those orchids and make sure that the orchids are indeed in trouble before you actually do anything Fish Snatchers left a comment on one of my Bulbophyllum care videos. They're asking if I give any of them a dry winter rest. Uh, no, as far as I know, Bulbophyllums do not need a dry winter rest in the sense that they don't go dormant. Now, if there is a species or several that does that, I don't know it or it might not be available for sale at orchid nurseries. So the ones that I have, the Echinolabium and the Elizabethan Buckleberry, which I still have and it's a hybrid, they don't take any winter rest. Even if they don't grow as fast or quite at all during winter, it doesn't mean they do take a rest. Moreover, they actually don't like to dry out, so I don't let my Bulbophyllums really dry out. So if you're not sure what your Bulbophyllum requires, if you have one, just Google it, Google the species and see what its characteristics are. But for the main part, I do believe that Bulbophyllums don't take winter rests and moreover don't really appreciate drought. If you guys know any of them which is deciduous or takes a winter rest in the proper sense of the word, at least like a nobly, do let us know down below in the comments so that we learn more. Kenneth is asking, how do they get aerial roots on their mini Phalaenopsis, which currently is creating a new leaf, but no aerial roots? Oh, don't worry, they will appear whether you like it or not. You just have to be a little patient. I'm assuming that this is a new orchid and it's just done blooming. It started to create a brand new leaf and soon the roots will come. Some, if not most of the orchid roots will actually go in the uh, pot, in the soil, while others will just take to the air. But which ones will do so and how many will do so, you cannot really tell. However, you can rest assured that at least within a year you will have some aerial roots on your orchid, provided that your environment is not extremely, extremely dry. Aerial roots do okay with drier air, but I do suspect that if the air is not all that humid, they will just start to grow and then stop. They will not continue their growth like this. So if you want to promote their growth, you can actually try to improve the humidity around your orchid if you have issues with it. You might not have issues. So at least have 50% or above around the orchid. You can use a ultrasonic humidifier and uh, in a few months you should have some lovely wild looking aerial roots. If you don't have aerial roots, that's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean your orchid is not healthy. If you don't want to hassle with the humidity, you don't have to. Aerial roots are not not necessarily a necessity. They do happen most of the cases and some people even consider them a nuisance, while other people really, really love them. Speaking about roots, a viewer is asking if red spider mites can occur on roots. And the answer is no, they can fall on the roots, they can just walk on the roots to get to the other side, no pun intended, but they don't really feed on the roots. They prefer fresh new growth. In my experience, the leaves are the ones mainly attacked, the stem as well, the joints and in between them, and also the flower spike and also the flowers, everything that is tender. 
Roots, I don't suspect they're very, very tender and there aren't many pests that feed on the roots except the snails. As far as my experience goes, spider mites, at least the false one, the red one, it doesn't attack the roots, although it might fall or be present on the root. Ket is saying that their Zycopetalum's largest pseudobulb started to get rotten from the top. Do you know what you could do? Is it a big issue? Yes, it sadly is a big issue. If there is an infection on the pseudobulb, it will continue downwards and in some cases it can propagate through the rhizome to the other pseudobulbs. It's not a rule though, sometimes it doesn't happen, but you never know what the case will be and many of us just don't want to take any risks. So I'll share with you down below some links to some videos that show you how to remove these pseudobulbs, but also I'll share with you a link to a recent video in which I did not remove the pseudobulb until I decided it's time, just so you'll see what can happen and learn more. Um, but I would suggest that if you could just remove the pseudobulbs so you don't take the risk of affecting the other pseudobulbs. And as a last question, well, this is more of a suggestion that I really wanted to address. Us Kitten or US Kitten is asking if I could make a sort of separate email address where you guys could actually send me pictures of your orchids so I can respond to you based on the pictures in the video and I'm guessing showing the pictures and so on. I thought about this actually in the past and how I could actually make something like this work. Uh, but the problem is I'm not what you'd call the best at keeping up with stuff. And you might recall that last year I started the viewers competition, something you guys sent me pictures of your orchids. I tried to make some videos. Um, I could not keep up with that. It was a little bit more time consuming than I expected and it's absolutely my fault. One of the many flaws that I have is that I take on board a lot of projects because I, I know I can do them. I think I can do them. But then when I actually do them, I realize I actually don't have the time of day to do them. And then I end up feeling bad because I said I would do them and I'm not. So this is one of those. Going through the emails, reading everything, getting the pictures, compiling them, do a video. I want to do it so badly and I really thought about it, but I'm not sure if I can keep up with it. I don't want to promise anything, um, but I'm thinking actually of ways that can integrate a little bit with my current schedule and I can do something similar at least. I wanted to address it because it is a very good suggestion that I myself thought about and I think you guys would enjoy it as well um, if you just send me a picture. But rather than say, yes, let's do it and then never actually making a video out of it, you know, I just want to think about it a little bit and see how to better do it and actually calculate if I can uh, properly have time for it. And I am having it in my mind. So thank you for the suggestion. And because somebody actually asked me about my Shilariana, let's end with an image of her. This is her now. She still looks great and she's grown this new leaf but she's a very slow grower. And it's time to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. And you know the drill, if you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q and and everything orchid related. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.